the, the first year was about 8,700, and the budget was about 440,000. Uh, the second year we jumped, uh, we had about 14,000, and the budget was 720,000, so it went up. And then that third year we went up to what 20,000, it jumped again, and uh, but then the budget went up over a million. I thought that wow. was a big jump. Yeah. And then the next year went to over two million. Wow. And last year the budget was three million. And each year the cup got larger until it was about 30,000 people 30, last year. 30,000 people last year. Everybody. We have so a that was kind of like the, the build up and the grand amazing. finale of a whole sequence of what, 15 years or so of development of the, of the Emerald Cup? Yeah. Well, it is 15 years this year, right? Mm. 15 years this year. So now, yeah. it, uh, so what, did, what were your reflections on that last great, the biggest, the best in so many ways? And now it's going to be different, but just a little reflection on that last one. What mm. would you like to say, anything about last that? Well, we knew that was legalization had happened, so it was kind of a celebration. There's a lot of excitement going into the end of the year. We, know, we all know with all the challenges this year that we probably wouldn't have been quite as excited maybe if we'd known that. But, <laughs> yeah. but we, you know, we did have legalization and, uh, and there was a different vibe in the air. Right. There were, it was legalization had been there. Everybody wanted to embrace it, felt more open, and the cup just uh, got bigger because of it. Mm -hmm. you know, more normal, everyday people were right. just coming. And the other thing that happened at the cup too after a pretty while was it, it, it became like a trade show with all machinery and... Yeah techniques and shelving and lighting and extracting machines and trim machines and so on. Who would have on. ever thought? I we know. go from no vendors, going yeah. back there at the cup, we had no, no vendors. Once we did the speakers, for some reason we did the speakers and then all of a sudden we decided to have vendors mm. at Area 101. I remember outside, we, we had the first, tents outside. Yeah, a few of them. We had like, right. but I remember one of the first started, guys you know, was yeah. the guy who had all these old medicine bottles that said, yes, yes, that's, right. that's yeah, right. That's right. God, I wish I could find him. He had some good stuff. so on, right? He had a whole bunch of stuff. He came and did his bottles and then SC Labs jumped in there we had a few in the front now, let's see the budget and, uh, for those first shows was probably a couple hundred bucks uh, at, at area 101 <laughs> yeah no it got to the point where those shows ended up you know 10 to twenty thousand. i think the last show at area one it cost me 40. wow I was spreading that on like that a lot. yeah the last and then the material was about 50 grand or something now but, it's up to but <laughs> really realize, I, I would use i'd lose money on most of those i mean all oh, the way you up did on to the beginning them. because it was like so much to put in and, and do and <laughs> i didn't care but um well, yeah, it was we actually, uh, it, was an, uh, it was a gift to the community in a way, a way to, hey, we're all together, let's get together, oh, and yeah. basically let's have a harvest party, yeah. right, and to celebrate. It you know, was a Well, party. who grew the best pot this year, and basically? who had the That's best party? That's where it started, yeah. And we, <laughs> we, the and we needed a party yeah. in December before everybody went off, right? But And last year's, last year, the first, the last year's at the um, Santa Rosa Fairgrounds, that was amazing because it was the last year before January 1st, and since the cup is in December, Everybody really went kind of wild because they knew they as of January 1st, rules are going to change. You know, we've always wanted to make the cup very inclusive and not make it very expensive so everyday people can just enter and have a chance to win the cup. It's an, mm. it's an everyman thing where everybody's got a chance to win it. It's not right. expensive, so you got to be like a pro or have a lot of money. Uh, but the way it is with distribution and having to bring mm. it to you. But we are going to have an everyday cup like that because we're going to have a personal grow cup. So, so explain the difference between uh, the flower personal, and trees. Well, personal grow is like where you have, you know, under six plants. You, you're not getting uh, any, sell any of it, but you still want to enter the cup. More like a state yeah. fair. Yeah, like it's you like, have a yeah, tomato, you can, come in, you can enter that into the cup. And, and does that have to get tested or no? It does have to be tested. You have to pay for the testing well, yourself. So, and how and much then, is the testing on that? Just so uh, a few know. hundred bucks. At least, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to so be money. So it's going to cost you to it's enter be even money. that yeah. one. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you want to do anything with your bud to ever have it tested, yeah, you're going to have to go through testing. Right, so. right. So then so, the second thing would be so light that, depth, you're saying? Well, we're going to have three different contests. Right. But, uh, um, we'll, have, we'll have a personal grow, and then we'll have the, the light depot, uh, which, of course, is light deprivation where you're forced flowering with natural sunlight. Right, right. You know, can we call it mixed light to some extent because we are allowing people to use light in the beginning, right. but you just can't finish it with lights. Right, right. right. good. Uh, and so that's the depot contest, and then we're going to have long season, traditional that, long season. That's so a we'll, new word, though, long season now. Is yeah, that's it's <laughs> really grow. a new word. I like it. it. It's kind of like it. Long, long season, season sun grow and however it really changes. Huh. So that's, again, one of the great things about this contest is that, you know, it is organic, it is sun grown, 
and uh, the judges are all really competent people. So now we have three kind of flower, the, the, the personal grow, mm -hmm. the uh, full sun grow, and full season, and the light up. But there are other contests. There's concentrates, edibles. What's all, what are they There's all? There's 27 contests. 27. No, no, no. There's 27 and judging contests. Pants. Now, wait, I want everybody to be clear. Nikki and I do not judge everything. Just keep that in mind, right? We just judge the well, flowers, right? But there are separate judging categories. panels that are going to be judging tinctures, everything else. So no, can you remember? I just want to take it back. This started with... Like a couple dozen <laughs> entries, flowers and a few judges yeah, sitting on amazing. the floor. Now there's as many categories as there were entries in the very first year. I don't even, yes. I still don't know if I believe that, but uh, that's what well, they So what me. is that 27? Every kind of concentrate you can think of. Yeah. Do you have vape pens and things like that? Yeah, everything. Oh, yeah. Really? Cartridges. We have two different types of cartridges. Oh, my gosh. And now gosh, we're bringing in hydrocarbon this year, so we're going to have shatter and uh, all the uh, BHO stuff. You're so doing a like, hydrocarbon section. Yeah, so there's like, okay, each that's one funny. of those has got like uh, three of each. So you got concentrates and then you got CBD. You got the right. CBD side. Right. So now there's all those contests and the edibles, tinctures, medicinals, Topicals. breaking it up into it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this is edibles, truly astounding. This is a witness of what the cannabis industry has become. Isn't it's it? truly amazing. Isn't and then, it? like I said, all the machinery wow. that's going to be on display and so yeah. on. How many booths are there going to be, do you think, just of the non-cannabis booths? Just as many, but they all want to be in consumption. They want to be in the consumption area. Ah. Oh, interesting. Everybody wants to be where the party is. Excuse me. Oh, I see. So there won't be no. two sections anymore. There's going to be. There's going to be a non-consumption area, but oh. people would rather be in with the consumption oh, right, people because right. that's where all Even the Even the people is. that aren't selling the flowers, you mean? Or? Well, when we moved, what happened was when we moved the awards i mean not the awards and the and the uh, entries that whole display out of the hall of flowers yeah remember the hall of flowers yeah yeah when we moved that into where the sarah lee was and made yeah. that a really cool vibe in there yeah yeah that place bumped last year were you were you going in there we went I in did there once it yeah, really yeah. Was really good. had a vibe going oh yeah. good oh, but good. then it killed hall of flowers because now there wasn't a draw yes to pull people into the hall of flowers oh, to so, see that ah. so it's a constant flow ah. coming to see yeah. the awards and so there's nothing to draw them back there and so it became kind of a trade show room yeah yes you know it did. a vendor yeah. room yeah. and there which was a little boring you know, a little yeah. boring so one other thing i want to bring up because i noticed you're wearing this uh, uh bio vortex uh t-shirt right and that, that's one thing that the the, the cup has also been pioneering. Yeah. We pay, well, you gave out an award for the regenerative, regenerative agriculture, yeah, that's and that's going to be a whole other section again. And I think they're having a, a private a, a renegade, uh, uh, what do they call it, regenerative agriculture contest. Yeah. Right. So only people from certified uh, or regenerative gardens will be entering that contest. Uh -huh. Right. So anyone who want to talk any more about that the whole movement? That's incredible. Uh, Jesse Dodd I brought that in from the Cultivation Classic with Jeremy Plume. I went up there and saw that. They were started at in Portland. Um, I give an acknowledgement for that. Uh, Jesse and Dan Mars have led the way. Really just amazing people. Mm -hmm. uh, Earth-friendly, caring, cultivator, right. you know, biodynamic farmers. And so that's what Jesse is, Biovortex right. yeah. and su Sustainable yeah. Agriculture. Right. Yeah. And so he... Um, has developed that. It's the third year. It's incredible. And we get a lot of media on that. Mm, right. It's, you know, it's really about, No, it's been an important signal you know, to the rest of the world good. that uh, cannabis growers are really on the cutting edge of, of cutting. getting agriculture yeah. back to living soil, yeah. the soil food web, and regenerative techniques. And that's one of the things that the cup has really, uh, really been, you know, publicizing and so on. So I think that's really, uh, that's a great thing. Yeah, that's, it's amazing when you think of those awards. And there's another one. You yeah. know, and we still do the, the Breeders Cup, so for the best, uh, best, yes, the best. Uh, well, the, whoever in the seed, com in the flower competition, is making seeds gets the highest. Is yeah. that the way it works? Uh, well, Tim, now you know, you're a visionary, you know, and it's like it, there's a vision that you have that you had that created uh, the Emerald Cup. And, uh, you know, Nikki and I are really just honored and pleased to be part of the people developing that whole vision. You know, you've taken care of the whole production side and, you know, we've been working on the judging side and so on. But now it's going to change into the future. So what is your new vision for how the Emerald Cup is going to... Yeah. Well, it's become a joint vision. Uh, it's not just my vision anymore. Uh, I've partnered up with Red Light and, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Louie and the Red Light people and Star Hill Presents. Uh, on the cup, they're a minority partner, but they brought their world-class production team in, uh -huh. and incredible people. Uh, so who spider. else does Red Light work? 
who do they work with? Uh, no, what other festivals are they working on? Well, plus, uh, they own Star Hill Presents, which owns uh, parts of Bonnaroo, Outside Lands, uh -huh. uh, South by Southwest. Uh -huh. I mean, you name it, largest shows in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also have... So we're still tiny compared to that, right? I mean, we're t we're, yeah, but they have the ability to do shows around the whole world mm. quite easily. And they I own see. a lot of arenas and stadiums. And, nice. and they also have the best music talent agency in the world because they discovered Dave Matthews. That's where he, he you know, started, mm -hmm. was by discovering Dave Matthews and they've got Fish on their roster and Luke Bryant the country western star and uh, all the EDM with bass nectar and stuff they're like cutting edge yeah. mm -hmm. offices in the, all over the place but so they put this world class team together so that we could take the cup on the road and take our message around the rest of the state and the wow. country and the world and so that's what we've done so now do they've partnered up on the production side they brought in kind of like we hooked up together they brought their world-class team in and they really slowly moved our people out and there's just like we were talking before just really me left with my daughter and the rest of everybody because they brought they just replaced everybody with world-class people uh -huh. and so we're ready to go to LA next year mm. we're ready to go to uh, and, and how are we gonna do that it's gonna be actual competition down there? Or? Uh, yeah, we do a summer show. In California, uh, in we California. can do that. Yeah. No, a summer show, right. depot, concentrates, uh, open it up, just cut, you know, there's a void, chalice fell down, there's a, there's a space for us, we've looked at chalice a bunch of Chalice is over? Yeah, chalice is they over. They had a lot of problems. Yeah. A lot of problems, they, okay. they don't want to badmouth them, but they just had a lot of issues, I'm they're so done. High Times lost $24 million, mm -hmm. they're about ready to go under uh, if they're not careful, and so the cup's going to expand, we just did it slowly, we wanted to get through the legalization right, be a model, we spent a lot of time lobbying, um, so we've really been a model for the state. So now we can take that model and go to other states and other countries. Right. And so that's what we're going to do. Right. So we want to take you and us and the rest of our vibe, Kevin Jodry and all the rest of the, the Emerald Triangle energy, Great. and take it around uh, first in Southern California, then like uh, you know, in Vancouver we have offers to go into Canada and stuff, and move around the... Uh, when they went to Spanibus this year, you know Spanibus, the big yeah. show there? Yeah. Uh, not to toot our horn, but... Uh, all the people went there, Weed Maps, SC Labs, all of them. Did you go? Even Shiloh, no, but Shiloh and, and the rest of them from Virgin. Ah, mm -hmm. And they found out that the number one name in Spanibus for recognition wasn't any of those names. It was it was the Emerald Cup. <laughs> That's what people knew. And so it was, it was like we had invitations to play all in South America, Europe. And so we, we can't do that, not for me, like mentally. But I can ah. see it's one, three, five years being mm -hmm. uh, two or three shows next year ah, and absolutely. growing into that. And then being able to do kind of a road show after that, mm -hmm. maybe six oh, to nine about shows. A, yeah, part of Spanibus. Huh? Maybe we could just get a corner at the Spanibus well, thing there's, to there's, represent the yeah. Emerald There's Cup. a couple of shows. Here's what's happening yeah. without going into too much of it. But there's a couple of big shows across the country. And, you know, Corn and those guys have got opportunities to buy into these. Mm -hmm. And we could merge the Emerald Cup into parts of those and immediately, like, well, like Corn owns part of the South yeah. by Southwest. How so do we, we keep it there. the Emerald yeah, Cup? Yeah. How do we keep the vibe and the integrity? That's going to be the key because element. Because of us, you know, we didn't think we could move the that vibe uh -huh. uh, to Santa Rosa. Right. We were really worried about moving right. to Santa Rosa. Right, that's true. And uh, a lot of people criticized it too. Yeah, yeah but you know what? We I went down and got a hundred couches from the Goodwill and brought those couches. Because when people came to the cup at our place at Area One One, it was like down home. You yeah, had couches. Yeah, yeah. It was organic. It was a wood wood burning stove right, going right. in the corner. You could walk outside and do whatever you wanted. Yeah. It was a survivor's breakfast, so people started doing psychedelics after midnight, and whoever was awake in the morning got a free <laughs> breakfast. And it was just a different a whole. It was it wild. Was yeah, yeah. And so, how did we bring that to Santa Rosa, the fairgrounds? We brought some energy and some good decorations and right. uh we brought all the uh, couches and just the, the know, couches all it the was people the couches. And, and then all the vendors and all yeah. the all of yeah. our energy and just yeah. plopped it in there and, it, yeah. and, and boom it just sparked yeah, well, that's true. and yeah. blew up so we're going to bring I, that to la we're going to bring so. that around the country no, i think la is ready for us actually yeah. i think the rest of the country and the rest of the world is. yeah uh, yeah we could do and it that's what they what do they want they want to get the, the cutting edge stuff that's coming all this cannabis is look how fast is the fastest growing industry in the world is cannabis yeah. Literally. Well, just and the cup. 13 years ago, there was flower competition. This year, there's 27 yeah. different competitions. And that's yeah, yeah. how the t entire cannabis market has expanded worldwide. Yeah. Oh, right? Was, and yeah. grandmas are using yeah. tassabs and tinctures and so on and so forth. So, And then, you know, if you look at the rest of the industry, like those times, there were no vape pens in 03 when we started no. the cup, right? God, those contests. No vape right. pens. No, nobody knew what rosin was. Right, yeah. None of Live resin. None of that. You know, shattered. So, so it's an amazing thing 
thing of this see. awareness that we brought to the people, but also the amazing inventiveness and engineeringness and entrepreneur of people just, wow. And that's part of because they get stoned and they invent something, right? <laughs> right? And it's, or they get stoned and they actually create a whole new design, right? Or a whole layout yeah. or, or, or a marketing program, right? It's like taking all that energy that is, is liberated by cannabis and putting it into like, wow, making something amazing. So yeah. anyway, it's been a whole lot of fun. This yeah. trip, let's keep on doing it, man. I think uh, we're on a we're still on a roll, yeah. supposedly. Yeah, this sounds fun. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Looking forward one. to the future. Yeah, this gonna is going to be, gonna be a, yeah. Now think about this: just going around and doing, going to L.A. and then maybe going up to maybe Washington or Michigan or yeah. I don't know who uh, uh, back right. east or somewhere. Well, pulling out these uh, swarmy yeah. joints. These yeah, big we're old with yeah, just going out there. <laughs> eyes doing, we like could do this. contests there and just yeah. bring the judges. <laughs> You know, get a really good team. All right. Hey, well, hopefully we'll meet you guys out there somewhere. <laughs> right. Somebody who's watching anyway, this on so, the Anyway, uh, so thanks so world. much, Tim. Thanks so much, Tim, yes. for joining us and reminiscing and projecting about the future. And Tim truly is a, a visionary up here. And, uh, well, you know, it's been happening for a long time, and we're just really glad to be part of it. So Actually, Tim's the reason we're up here. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Just have to say it. Yeah, yeah that's true. really. First, you know, he transfer. offered up yeah. his land, yeah. Area 101. But for I also a party. want to say, if you go by Area 101, yeah. you see all the statues of the gods and goddesses. That's we had a hand in that too. So, oh, yeah, anyway, uh, thanks together. for joining us, and yeah. uh, hope you come next time to Smoking with Swami and stay high. Got it.